Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gay Teal Crafts. I'm Sarah, and as promised, this week I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some tips and tricks for how I work with written instructions for patterns while I'm working those patterns. So um, I've just completed two sweaters in the last couple of months, and it's really helped me refine um, the way that I keep track of where I am in a pattern, what size I'm making, any special instructions, any modifications that I'd like to make um, or need to make as I work through this, and um, then gives me uh, a good overview of what I did in the pattern once I'm finished. And so um, there are a lot of ways to uh, do this type of work. Um, these are just my personal techniques that work the best for me, um, but you may have other things that work for you. And so um, if you have another way, again, I'm not saying that you have to change what you're doing if what you're doing works for you. But um, if you are either a new knitter or if you're starting to branch out into more complicated patterns, maybe you haven't worked from charts before, um, but you're going to tackle that in an upcoming project, um, this hopefully will be uh, helpful for you. Um, so right off the top here, I um, want to mention that um, this is a low-tech and inexpensive approach to keeping track of your patterns as you're working through them. Um, there are a lot of technological solutions, and I'll mention a few, um, but I just use a pencil, a highlighter, and if I'm working a chart, I also like highlighter tape. So this is my toolkit. Um, there are some great software programs out there um, and apps for your digital devices, for your phone, for your tablet. Um, I know one that I uh, learned about recently on a knitting podcast that I listened to um, called Unraveling, the Unraveling podcast with Greg and Pam. Um, they mentioned a tool that they're excited about called the Knit Companion, and that's an app for smart devices. Um, and I believe there's a, it's a freemium kind of a thing, so you can get a free version of it, and then there's some extra features as well if you have a, a monthly or yearly subscription to it. Um, I did go through a period where I was using a tablet to keep track of my patterns and work from them. For a while, I was using a, a standalone, um, just a generic PDF editor. I think it was called Goodreader. Um, and that does allow you to mark up your PDFs, highlight things, um, and make text notes. Um, but there's a bunch of reasons that I found myself drifting away from using my tablet um, to manage my patterns. Um, I think one of the main things was that it was heavy and awkward to kind of sit in my preferred location, which is the couch. I tend to sit kind of cross-legged, and it was hard to keep the tablet in easy access. Um, where I could just read off of it with a glance and not worry about knocking it over or it falling off of my lap. Um, the other thing is that, you know, tablets, uh, you have to keep them charged. Um, you have to tote them around with you if you are carrying your knitting bag somewhere. Um, that's some extra weight that you have to carry with you. And um, I also just found the having to wake up my tablet from sleep and enter a passcode to be kind of annoying. Now, you can probably turn the passcode feature off, but um, just having to wake my tablet up in order to quickly glance at something or double check a number um, was a bit annoying for me. And I just prefer paper um, because it doesn't take a battery. Um, you can write directly onto the paper. Um, it's easier and faster to make notes. Um, and, you know, it's lighter weight. It's not going to crash. You're not going to have a system update problem. Um, I do know that uh, Greg had mentioned when he tried to download the new version of Knit Companion to test it out, um, his tablet was older and wouldn't update to this latest version of the software. Um, and, you know, software companies come and go. They go out of business. They stop making certain products sometimes. So all of these are kind of considerations, and I just decided to go low-tech and use some inexpensive uh, tools um, and, you know, a very straightforward way to keep track of my patterns. But again, I'm not saying that using a tablet is bad. If you like that, if it motivates you to knit, if it helps you keep track of what you're doing, then that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. 
Um, another piece of technology that I don't use, but um, I have friends that do a lot of lace and color work knitting. Um, and I'll try to insert a picture here, but I'll also try to describe what I'm talking about. It's a it's an analog kind of um, stand for your printed knitting pattern. And typically they have like a magnetic bar or an elastic band that also acts as a guide when you're reading from a chart. Um, and so I could see how that could be useful. You know, it'll keep your pattern clean. Um, you can keep your uh, keep your place pretty easily with that. Your pattern's not going to get wrinkled um, while you're working, so you know it should be easier to read. So that's something that's interesting. But again, you have the weight factor and the fact that you have to buy this extra thing. So, you know, again, something something to possibly look into, um, especially if you do a lot of lace knitting. I would say that might be uh, a good investment. Um, but for me, just plain old paper is the way to go. Um, so before I get into the kind of tips and techniques of you know, modifying or writing on your patterns, I just want to talk about printing patterns. Um, and I'll use this pattern as an example. This is the Felix Cardigan Pattern by Amy Christophers, and I recently made uh, a version of this sweater for myself. Um, this copy that I've just printed is not marked up, but I'm going to be marking it up over the course of uh, this little tutorial here. And the first thing I want to point out is that I've done something that's completely unnecessary, which is that I've printed a page that only has a photo and the title of the sweater on it. Um, and, you know, that may seem like a no-brainer, but when you're talking about toner and using up paper and using up resources, um, go into your print settings and um, you can tell the computer not to print certain pages. Um, sometimes you might have to skip around in a pattern if there's, you know, let's say page two has a lot of instructions, page three is mostly photos, page four has a lot of instructions. Um, if the designer has alternated their layout like that, you can skip over those pages that are mostly either schematics or um, photographs. Um, it's not that, you know, having photographs or, or schematics is not valuable. I think those things should be included with a pattern. Um, but you don't necessarily have to print those out. Um, so in this, this is a six page pattern and I would say the first page and probably this last page, which just has a note on how many uh, rows of ribbing to do. And then it has, um, measurements, the finished measurements of the different sizes on here. So that's very important information. Obviously you have to pick which size you're going to make based on those measurements, but you don't need to carry this page around with you. So you could refer to that in your digital copy and then, um, you know, just highlight or circle the size that you're going to make throughout the rest of the pattern, but you don't need to print this. So you get it down from three pieces of paper to two right off the bat. The other thing I'll say is that for, in most cases, you don't need to print in color. Um, you can print grayscale and that will be fine. In this case, you've got, um, you know, just some a few smaller pictures, which is fine. Uh, those would have shown up in grayscale if I'd printed this in black and white. And then the rest of it is just text. So that will help you cut down on the amount of toner and the amount of paper that you're using when you're printing out your patterns. Um, typical setup for start before you knit is going to be choosing the size, um, if there's multiple sizes for your accessory or your garment. And then you're going to go through and highlight all of the instructions relevant to that size. So all of the all of the lines that say, you know, knit until it's this long or knit or keep increasing until you have this many stitches on your needle, all those things that are particular to the size that you're making, you're going to go through. And I will either circle them in pencil or use a highlighter marker, kind of depending on my mood. Um, and sometimes I will make a pattern more than once. I do this a lot for charity knitting or gift knitting where let's say I have a hat pattern, um, but I'm going to knit it for a bunch of different people in different sizes. I will go through and do different kinds of markings for each size um, as I work my way through it each time. So maybe the first time I'm going to circle a size, the next time I might underline a size, um, and maybe a third time I would use a highlighter. And of course you just have to remember which marking um, you're working from on that version. Um, but that's not that's not too difficult, and that way you can save yourself having to print multiple um, copies of a pattern.
Well, as an aside, I also wanted to mention that um, if you are a, a new designer or you're thinking about designing patterns, pay attention to the way that you're laying out your patterns. Um, that's really important. Font choice and readability are important. The amount of space um, between your lines is uh, important. And I'll show some close-ups in a minute of, of what I mean by that. Uh, making sure that you have adequate margins so that your knitters can make notes um, or make uh, you know hash marks or things to keep track of where they are. Um, all of those things is good. You don't want to cram your text so tightly that it's either difficult to read or difficult to kind of work with on the page. Um, I would say that if you can consolidate the way that you're putting photos and schematics into your patterns so that they're all um, lumped together uh, maybe at the beginning or the end of the pattern, that would also be good because, like I said, that information is important. But for those of us who like to print out um, patterns, it means we have less skipping around to worry about. We can just say print from page two to page four of a six page pattern and we'll have all the written directions that we need. Um, so those are just some tips. It's something that I try to follow in my designs. It's not always possible to pull it off, but I am aware and I'm conscious of that. Um, so like I said, uh, after that initial setup, you're going to either highlight or circle um, all of the directions that are relevant to your pattern. I also like to highlight things um, like yarn overs at the end of a line or uh, something, it might be telling you to switch needle sizes. That's one that I often will miss and I'll, so I'll knit the ribbing and then I'll just continue on to the body of a sweater um, with the wrong size needle. Um, so, you know, highlight anything, any little gotchas where you'll often forget um, or you find yourself kind of skipping over something. Um, now to work uh, through the pattern itself, um, I do like to keep my pencil handy. Um, I will often modify a garment um, to suit my unique shape. Um, so I'll pick a size that's you know, about right for my body. And then, um, as I was saying in a previous video, um, like for this sweater, I had to modify and make the sleeves larger in my size than the pattern called for, but keep the body size the same. So having a pencil handy to um, write out those things, write out the stitch count modifications, or you know maybe you change the number of rows of ribbing that you did on a sleeve, and then you want it to match on the other sleeve when you get to that point, so you wanna jot that down. Pencil's obviously very handy for that. Um, I like a pencil because you can erase. So sometimes I think I'm gonna knit a certain number of rows of ribbing, and then end up knitting a different number in the end, so you can erase and go back um, also pencil doesn't, you know, bleed onto your fabric or something. If you're, if your pattern's in your knitting bag with your garment, um, you're not going to have to worry about getting ink on your garment. Um, in terms of keeping track of written instructions, and, um, I'm just going to do some overlay pictures here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but in terms of keeping track of written instructions, so here I have a paragraph of instructions, and it's formatted in such a way that it's a little it's a little difficult to mentally keep track of everything. So what I'm going to do as I'm working this is I'm actually going to tick off each direction um, so that you can keep track of exactly where you are. So for example, knit to the beginning of round marker. That's one instruction. Okay, now I've done that. Now I'm going to slip that marker. Okay, did that knit two yarn over. Maybe I can do those together. Uh, knit to two stitches before the next marker. Okay, so that was a, a, a little while of knitting. I'll take that one off. And then yarn over, knit two, slip marker. That's kind of all one instruction. And then knit one yarn over. And then knit to the wrap and turn. So imagine that you know, I was knitting this whole time and I was actually pausing between each of these instructions and kind of ticking them off as I go along. Um, this is what I mean about leaving adequate line space here. What I'd really like to see is this reformatted so that um, each kind of clump of instructions, maybe between the markers, um, was its own line without line breaks in the middle of the instructions. But if you can't do that or if your designer hasn't done that for you, then you can use this method 
of just ticking off each stitch or each little piece of instruction so that you can keep track of where you are. Um, it's sometimes difficult to do that just mentally while you're knitting because you know, if you're knitting in the round, your stitches are all kind of scrunched up on your cable of your, of your circular needle. And it can be easy to kind of miss a marker or miscount, um, you know, an increase or a decrease or a yarn over or something like that. It's easy to miss something in there when you're trying to read your knitting. Um, and by the time you get to the end of a row, let's say on a, on a sweater top in a larger size, you know, that's, that's several minutes and I, my brain just can't hold um, a lot of instructions that are similar but slightly different. You know, knit three, yarn over, knit two, move the marker, knit one, yarn over, knit two again. That all becomes kind of garbled in my head and I'm not able to memorize an entire line of instructions for something like that. So being able to tick off each um, little piece each little bit of that instruction line is is really handy and then having that space between the knitting instructions in your printout is is great for that as well if you didn't have enough space you could actually um, lightly cross them off in the text um, because this is again a section where you're not going to be repeating um, those instructions you're just going to be working through them once now in another case um, this is the same pattern, but in another case, you have a section where you have to repeat um, the, uh, in this case, increases um, and the shaping for this sweater, and you have to do it multiple times. So here you have a paragraph where you have a similar layout, but you're going to have to repeat this multiple times. So in this case, what I'm going to do is use my pencil and instead of making a check mark above each of these, I'm going to treat each line as one set of instructions and just make a hash mark out to the side to keep track of where I am. So the first time I knit this round, I'm going to knit two yarn over, knit to two stitches before the next marker. Okay, I can remember that much. So I've done that. Then yarn over, knit two, slip marker, knit one yarn over. Okay, I might have to read that back to myself a couple times while I'm working that little bit, but those stitches are all, you know, within, that's like one, two, th three, four, that's five stitches essentially, right? So you can kind of remember what to do for five stitches. Okay, I did that. And then knit to one knit to ones before, slip marker, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I've done this one. Then, the next time you come around and you're knitting the same round again, you're gonna make another hash as you work through each of these. So then you'll know how many times you've repeated based on the number of hash marks. Um, and that's a great way to keep track of this without having to use a separate stitch counter, which is another tool, obviously, for um, keep, keeping track of your patterns and um, keeping track of the number of repeats that you've done. Sometimes I do like to use um, the stitch counters and row counters, um, particularly if it's a lot of increases or decreases. Let's say you're decreasing for the arm of a sleeve. And so I will use um, a stitch counter sometimes in that case because, again, it's an analog uh, thing that I can actually attach to my knitting and use um, as I come around so I don't have to you know, pick up a pencil or something like that. But the hash mark system works really well for me. And again, you know, if you already have a pencil to make other kinds of notes, you can just use the hash mark system. And again, you don't have to worry about either carrying a stitch counter around with you or buying one if you don't have one. Um, very low cost this way. Um, the other thing that you can do with these written instructions is deploy your highlighter tape and use your highlighter tape to keep track that way. So if it's handy, um, the way that I like to use highlighter tape is I break off a piece that's just the length of the text or the chart that I need, and then I fold down one edge like this. So this is the sticky side and this is the non-sticky side, and I just fold it sticky to sticky to make a little tab like that, and that way I can move this up and down the page. Um, now I have tried sticky notes, 
uh, brand name post-it notes. Um, but the highlighter tape is a little bit more sticky and lasts longer than a post-it note. Um, a post-it note, you know, it's only going to be sticky along one edge and then you have the weight of the rest of the sheet um, kind of pulling on it and also flapping around and I find that those fall off and then you lose your place. So with the um, highlighter tape, you know, you get you get a really good adhesion and that's what it looks like there. Um, this takes a little bit of effort to peel off so I just grab my little tab that I made there and it's, it does take some effort to get it off. So that's that's why I prefer the highlighter tape. It's lighter weight, you can see right through it unlike a post-it note and um, that works pretty well. So if we were to do this the way that I was before so you could highlight what you're working on and then move it down the page. Now you'll notice that the highlighter tape is wide enough that it is the width of you know, multiple lines of text, so I'll talk about my technique for, for managing that in just a second. Um, but that would be another way to do this with highlighter tape is just to highlight the row you're on and then move it down and then if you had to work it multiple times you could do just maybe one big hash mark out here in the margin and that would say I've done this set of instructions once, I've done it twice, I've done it three times, and that way you don't have to tick off each individual line. You can just make an overall for this section, how many times have I worked this. Um, so that works pretty well. The um, other way that I like to use the highlighter tape is specifically for uh, managing my charts. And I'll show you that on part of a chart from the sweater that I'm wearing. This is Manu by Isabel Kramer. I did this as a test knit for her earlier this year and I really liked it. It's a great design. Um, I did a whole video about uh, this test knit and my modifications and so you can see that um, earlier on on our channel. Just go back on our video feed. So here's a chart from this pattern. I'm not going to show very much of it. So here it is and there's my fresh little piece of highlighter tape and I can just move that up and down. So here's my highlighter tape on my chart. Now what I like to do is set it up so that the highlighter tape ends uh, at the last line that I've just completed. So in this case I would have ended line 25 and about to start 26. Um, and I like to read off the chart at the line that's just above the highlighter tape. For me, visually, this change in color uh, makes my eye kind of want to ignore um, because there's multiple lines hide, highlighted here with the highlighter tape. So my eye kind of naturally wants to go to either the top of this or the bottom of it. And so I found that by working, um, you know, you work charts usually from the bottom up. And so by using this method, I put the highlighter tape over the line I've just completed. And then my eye naturally wants to follow along on the stitches just above the highlighter tape. So that's the way that I use this. Obviously you could do it some other way, um, as long as you remember where you're reading your knitting and how you're reading this chart, um, just be extra careful that you're doing it the same way every time so that you don't skip a row um, or duplicate a row in your knitting. Now you can see here I've also used um, just a highlighter marker to tell myself I added an instruction here because I was using a different size of needle when I got to the color work um, than I was on the body of this sweater. So again, something that I have trouble with is remembering to switch needle sizes. So I not only wrote it in, I highlighted it with a highlighter marker to make sure that I would remember. Back on the highlighter tape for just a second, um, as you're moving this up, sometimes you'll pull off a little bit of ink from your page. So this is actually the piece that I use to knit this whole sweater. And it is still sticky. Um, it still wants to adhere but it's a little bit dirty because it's got some ink lift. Um, and there might even be a dog hair on there. So that's another reason why I, I like to knit along the top of the highlighter tape rather than trying to read through the highlighter tape as it gets dirty, as I've used it, um, it just becomes a little bit more difficult to see. So visually, again, you know, that really makes me want to focus on this line right here. Um, and that's another reason that I like to do it that way. But again, whatever works for you. You could also cover up something and just knit from below. As long as you know which row you're on and which one you're supposed to be knitting, it doesn't really matter how you use it. And if your piece does get too gross, you can just peel it off, toss that away, 
and then just make another small clean strip like this. Um, I have not had trouble with this falling off of my paper um, or getting lost in my bag, which is really good. So that's why I recommend it. So those are my main tips and tricks for keeping track of patterns, preparing patterns for knitting, and um, keeping track of where you are in your pattern as you work through. Um, one last thing I'll mention is that sometimes I have to heavily modify a pattern uh, by changing stitch counts. And so I'll insert a picture here. So here you can see that I have highlighted all of the um, original stitch counts for my size that the designer laid out. And then I actually drew arrows in the margin and said, okay, instead of this stitch count, do this many. And instead of this number, substitute this number. And that helped me achieve um, the shaping for the shoulders on this that I needed. So um, again, wider margins are helpful. Um, sometimes you can have a, a setting in your printer where you format the pattern onto the page and you print it at like 90% of the size um, and that will just give you a bigger margin uh, top, bottom and sides to um, for those kinds of notes or hash marks. Um, and again, designers, it's really handy if you if you leave, you know, one and a half lines or even double space your patterns that helps um, make sure that we have enough room to make these notes uh, uh, and circle things and whatever um, and still make the pattern very readable. So um, I'd love to hear your opinion on kind of pattern management, working from patterns and keeping track of where you are. Um, if you have any other tips or uh, inexpensive tools that you like to use, feel free to leave a comment below. And um, happy knitting. I hope you will, you know, take on the next uh, seemingly complicated set of instructions uh, with some of these techniques and, you know, knit yourself something, um, push yourself a little bit, you know, in developing a new knitting skill or technique or just pushing yourself, you know, maybe you've uh, only knit sort of flat things, you know, try a hat, try a sweater, try a sock. Um, don't be afraid of those things because as we know, knitting is you just read one line at a time, and if it says knit this many stitches, you knit that many stitches, um, and it will all come out. As long as you work from a well-written pattern, an accurate pattern, you will be able to do, uh, to do that and create the garment that you're interested in. So I encourage you to, to use some of these techniques and you know take on something um, and, and push yourself a little bit and learn something new. Um, thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget to hit to subscribe to our channel for more uh, knitting and other craft related videos and uh, tune in next week. We'll have something new for you. Thanks a lot. Have a great week.